Uh, one of the reasons we use dogs, and the main reason, is their incredible sense of smell. Um, compared to humans, uh, there is no comparison. Um, dogs have a complex network of mucus and tissues and scent receptors in their nose, making, uh, making them absolute machines for, for scent work. They can smell very tiny quantities, uh, very, when there's just a small bit of odor emanating, they're still able to uh, detect it. Uh, th they have some s physiological attributes that make them, again, fantastic for this work. They have a wet nose, as you may have noticed, dogs have wet noses. The reason they have a wet nose is that uh, uh, molecules are attracted and stick to the wet nose, making them uh, process the scent even more so. You may notice they have little slits on the side of their noses, uh, and that is for when they f they're sniffing, they, their noses flare, and it disturbs the scent and allows them to process it more. Um, dogs like bloodhounds and beagles and some of these long-eared dogs, you may wonder why their ears are so long. It's when they're searching and sniffing, their ears disturb the ground cover and again, bring up more scent to allow them to, uh, to bring it right into their nose. Um, I'll, I'll sort of try and illustrate the difference between the way we smell things and the way a dog smells things um, with a uh, baking cookies analogy. So if I walk into the home, into someone's home, and um, they're baking cookies, inside my nose, a human nose, there's five million scent receptors. I'll be able to walk into a room and through uh, the scent receptors, identify, my brain can identify that there are chocolate chip cookies being uh, cooked in the home. A dog has 200 million scent receptors compared to our five million. So while we think we're pretty fantastic that we can walk into a room and identify a chocolate chip cookies being baked, a dog can walk outside and identify that there's a dead squirrel in the attic, the neighbor's attic, two doors down. So the ability to, to smell is uh, incredible. So that's a really important aspect for the dogs. Um, another difference uh, between humans and dogs, and another reason why they're so fantastic at this detection work, is the fact that, um, we're keeping with my my cooking analogy, when we walk into a home, into a kitchen, and there is stew on the stove, we smell stew. A dog is, they compartmentalize odor. So what a dog smells is carrots, potatoes, peas, meat, beef, whatever you've chosen. So, um, and each one of them, they're able to make that identification. Where that really helps in drug and explosive work is that oftentimes people will try and mask odors if they're uh, smuggling drugs, for instance. They will uh, stick it inside coffee grounds or coffee beans, something that's quite, uh, it's got quite a strong odor. For us, that would fool us. We would, be able to, we would not be able to identify the uh, marijuana, for instance, in, in that. A dog in the same situation can walk in and go, coffee beans, Ziploc bags, marijuana. So it, it really doesn't work trying to mask the odor. They still can pick it up through this ability to come carp, carp, comp, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Compartmentalize odor, thank you. Um, another thing when you, when you think about uh, how, how amazing dogs are at their ability to, to, to smell, when a dog sniffs you, if, if Stat was to come up and sniff you right now, he would be able to tell where you've been, who you were with, what you had just eaten, um, if you're, and due to the chemical changes in your body, he can also say, tell you whether you're not well. Um, and all of these things make them an, a fantastic choice for scent detection, uh, drugs, and explosives. Um, all right. One of the other things I want to talk about that is really, really important is how we choose the dogs that we choose for the work, because not all dogs are able to do it. Um, there's a couple of factors we look for. One, they must be excellent in all environments. So the dogs must have good, solid temperaments. They can't be spooked by lights, noises, crowds, smoke, uh, what have you, because they're asked to work in all sorts of different environments. Um, they must have a crazy, crazy hunt drive. Uh, and hunt drive is the drive to not only chase a rabbit, lots of dogs will chase something if it moves, a squirrel, a rabbit, uh, these dogs must have that drive as well, but once the rabbit disappears or the squirrel disappears, the dog must want to continue to hunt for it. 
even when there's nothing there because they're required to hunt for uh, whatever they're seeking out. Good ball drive. Um, Ball drive is the drive to play with a toy, whether it's a Kong, a ball, a towel, it doesn't matter what. Um, uh, that's how we reward the dogs when they have found the, the explosives or the narcotics, is that they are rewarded by a toy. Um, and if they don't have a great drive for a toy to want to play, then there's not much of a reward for them. So these are, these are the characteristics that we look for in all the dogs. They must possess all of these. Um, if any of these are lacking, then they would be washed from a program. Uh, some breeds are better at this work than others. Uh, any of the hunting or sporting or herding dogs, or most of them anyhow, uh, retrieve, Labrador Retrievers, Golden Retrievers, German Shepherds, Beagles, uh, these are all uh, the Weinerimers, Pointers. They have strong hunt drive typically, uh, so they are great great dogs, you see a lot of them in detection work. Dogs that don't do well in detection work, um, just from, uh, from their physical characteristics, are dogs like Pugs, Pekingese, dogs that have sort of a squished face. They just don't have the same ability to, uh, to use their nose as, um, as some of the hunting dogs. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, uh, finally I'm going to touch on how we actually teach a dog to um, associate the smell of drugs or bombs with their favorite toy. What we do is we start to, uh, we use their toy uh, as, a, uh, as a reward for searching. So we'll have a toy, I'll show the dog the toy, I'll hide it on the dog, the dog will start to look for it, hunt for it. Um, because they've got this strong hunt drive, they'll continue to look for it until they find it. When they find it, uh, they get it. Um, eventually we, uh, we'll assume it's an a bomb dog for instance, Eventually what we do is we imprint them on an odor, so we'll hide th their toy along with a specific explosive odor. The dog then starts to look for his toy, but because he com com compartmentalizes odor, um, he's also smelling the explosive as well, so he starts to be imprinted on that odor. Eventually we can remove the toy, but the dog smells that odor and makes the association of his toy. He believes he's looking for his toy. So in essence, when you see these dogs looking for bombs and explosives, um, what they're really looking for is their toy. Um, and once you have imprinted them on one odor, it's the same process for all of them until they, they can have uh, up to 11 odors that they can be imprinted on, either explosive or um, narcotic odors. And uh, typically bomb dogs are trained on the following, smokeless powder, black powder, commercial dynamite, ammonium nitrate, primer sheet, detonator cord, TNT, and AMFO. Those are the popular ones. For drug dogs, it's hashish, marijuana, heroin, cocaine, ecstasy, and methamphetamine. Most um, drugs are components of that. Most bombs are components of those as well. So when they, are a when they are trained on these, they are able to pick up virtually all of them. So on that note, we have uh, Mike and Stat. Let's watch him see if he can find it. So you'll see him sniffing. He'll be sniffing, sniffing, sniffing. His nostrils are flaring. He's looking. And if he sits on those bags, we're in big trouble. Yeah, he's in big trouble. Yeah, if he goes to my bag, I've got a license for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's medical. <laughs> I think it would be there. <laughs> And there's his toy, and here is the explosive. So you can see he had no trouble telling us exactly where it was. Um, so f th there's no question where it was, and that's, um, that's why these dogs are just so incredibly e effective. Uh, there's been research done uh, on using dogs versus 
machine and there's absolutely no comparison. Dogs are the most efficient and effective uh, way to find these, these uh, bombs and, and drugs. So there you have it. There's Stat and Mike. Thanks very much, guys.